Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And today we're talking about a card from the Dead Marshes, Fast Hitch, the lore attachment that attaches to a Hobbit character. Action, exhaust Fast Hitch to ready attached character. I'm and it's Fast probably Hitch. one of my most, one of my favorite lights from the two towers. And I put as a fast hitch over the stump as anyone could have done, in the Shire or out of it. Sam, the two towers. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it ties the elven rope over one of the stumps at AM when they're traveling through the hills of Emin Wheel. <laughs> right, and it comes undone after they get cr- cl- climb up it. And he's yeah. like, oh, it was the best, best knot I could have done, and it still came on. Yeah. And then Frodo's just like, it's real elven rope. <laughs> right, right. So what do you think of Fast Hitch in terms of an attachment? In a Hobbit deck, brilliant. Outside a Hobbit deck, absolutely useless. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those cards that I feel like, um, like we did Sylvan February. We may have to revisit if we ever do like Hobbit September or something, you know, like, um, because I feel like, well, at this point, people know that I did a did a lower did a mono tactics uh, Hobbit deck, and um, I brought lore into it just so I could get access to Fast Hitch, and that didn't really work out so well. So I got rid of lore and got rid of Fast Hitch. But that's how much Fast Hitch has affected my own psyche about what you know what is going on you get one it's a one cost attachment to be able to ready and it's not even a hero it's a character so when this goes on to um when this goes on to tactics mary because mary isn't a bad quester for a hobbit he's got two willpower you know you put this on tactics mary and then he can attack back or he can attack twice during a round which is phenomenal or you put this on rosy cotton and rosy cotton and this was the joke at the very beginning when we first started this podcast was you know put a fast hitch on rosy and sam gets nervous you know like <laughs> i mean that means that you have availability to rosy to boost to buff other hobbits throughout the throughout the game because i think Ro- rosy is limited to one per once per phase but you know, that doesn't mean you can't... Now you're just going to make Sam jealous. Talking about <laughs> buffing other hobbits. Buffing other hobbits, right? <laughs> I tried to say that in a way that wasn't going to come out weird, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> no matter how I said it, it was going to be strange. Um... <laughs> That's why you got me, bitch. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and so, you know, the fact that you can attach this to a hobbit character to ready the hobbit character is phenomenal, and the fact that it only costs one is phenomenal. So, I mean, I think this is almost a staple in a hobbit deck, unless you're not running lore. But, I don't know, most hobbit decks, you'd want to run some sort of lore in them anyways, because, you know, talk, um, lore Pippin is really good, and, you know, there's lore Bilbo, of course, and then there's Falco, so, you know, I mean, and Falco isn't a horrible Hobbit hero to have uh, out and available to you, um, so I don't know, so I think that Fast Hitch is, is a great little Hobbit attachment, I love it. Yeah, I mean, like I say, Fast Hitch is, is what it is. It's like unexpected courage, but designed for hobbits. It's brilliant. And for one cost, you can't go wrong. Yeah. I mean, that's action advantage for one cost. Valiant Determination, which is the, which is the, um, that's the, the ally readying and unexpected courage, both cost two. You know. The only thing I think that could make this better is if they made it neutral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine if they made it neutral. Whoa, that'd be wild. Um, that would, <laughs> well, just scratch out the little lore icon in it. You know, like 
<laughs> you know, like it's just it's just make it neutral. Yeah. Um, but no. it, you know, and I mean it does have a skill trait and so I don't know if there's anything that necessarily targets a skill. Um so that I don't think is a thing right now. I, um I don't think there is anything that targets skills and I and I think it's like Unexpected courage with it being a condition, it can't be removed, except by removing an attachment in general. Right. But I don't think there's any card that says remove a skill attachment. Well, put... well, Elrond can can remove condition attachments, so that's a grief move. You can play Elrond and remove somebody's <laughs> unexpected courage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just saying, it's just something you could do. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna greet you. <laughs> right. If I have unex, if I'm playing a, a a deck that has unexpected courage, and you play Elrond, do you you have permission to to <laughs> remove my condition attachment? That'd be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's just an all around great card and i i would say that for hobbit deck it's almost op because of its cost but i think yeah. that i think that what is brilliant about it and the reason why i said almost op is that hobbits get action advantage but their stats don't have enough oomph behind them to make that action advantage overpowered you know what i'm saying like like tactics mary is probably one of the best hobbit heroes out there and even him with a fast hitch or Sam, who probably, I don't want to say universally, but is widely regarded as one of the best Hobbit heroes, you know, even a fast hitch on him, you know, early in the game doesn't really necessarily make him overpowered. Plus he's got, plus Sam has self readying anyways. So readying a Hobbit hero doesn't necessarily, or a Hobbit character doesn't necessarily make, um, make for a I don't know like for an an, uh, an overpowered combo so I think that that's what makes this super brilliant well uh, when it was designed it's definitely not an overpowered combo but now yeah this came out in the first cycle this is yeah. one of these things and I, I don't mean to interrupt but this is one of the things that I love about this game is we're talking about cards from the first cycle that are still amazing and well used and still are relevant in the game today and that's phenomenal sorry I'm done go ahead <laughs> right okay. as I was saying but then it was definitely not overpowered but now with today's expanded card pool i think it is just that little bit op and um, because now we've got cards like so rosie that can boost stats you've got um sting friend of friends all with yes it may take a little bit of setting up but once they're on the board hobbits become overpowered <laughs> But you have to get them on the board, and that's the thing. Yeah. So how many how many times, you know, how many cards are you going to be able to draw, and how many times are you going to be able to play all these cards, you know? So that's that's the challenge of a Hobbit is to get all these cards that are Hobbit specific on the on the right Hobbits, and then yeah, they become powerful. But that's true with any hero lineup, you know. I I was reading in the forums that you know. Don't tell me a hero is really good as long as he's got unexpected courage and three Dunedain marks on him. Because any hero is good with that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> this is this is what we're talking about, is that, you know, there's there's these combos in the game, or there's these cards in the game that you want to get out, but the challenge is to be able to get them out. So, I don't think that this card is necessarily overpowered. So, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should we ring this thing? There's not much to say when it comes to attachments. You know, like... Uh, I'll ring them. Yeah, I mean, the card art is great. I love the realistic card art. And, it, and I mean, it's showing the the stump on the on the hills of Emin Wheel there. You know, like, I mean, it's showing exactly what <laughs> what it is. What it, that scene that... What, yeah. that that was there so i i think the art really draws people into the game you know it's not 
Um, there was a there was a there was a game back in the day that was just pictures stills from the movie, and that wasn't as good. I really enjoy the the art of this game, and it really brings people into the game. I think. Oh, definitely, because yes, the game that you're talking about was stills from the movie, but this is it shows that it has had thought about it. They've actually designed the cards and they've thought about how they're going to do it, how they're going to represent something, even if its basis was in the book. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and, and you're you're allowing somebody else to come up with their own interpretation of this, but it's also like it's never cartoony. It's more. It's always realistic. It's always like photorealistic art, and that's what I like. When it gets kind of cartoony, is when I get is when I get kind of uh, a little more upset about it. Yeah, the only card that I found really sort of cartoony was Falco Boffin, which is like extraordinarily long neck. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, you know, and not every card can be a, a hit, you know, in terms of what it is, but, um, yeah, I know what you're saying, the card art is amazing. Yeah. In general, all the cards in Lord of the Rings DLC game is amazing. Right. I totally agree. Good point, Grant. Way to, way to go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, should we ring this guy? Yeah, let's bring it. Okay, so um, uh, for anybody who doesn't know the show, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary system of rating cards. We have cards that are, uh, we rate them 1 to 10, where 1 is the one card to rule them all, and 10 is the worst card in the game. And so, Grant, what would you say a fast hitch is? I'm saying a 3, because... It's a brilliant card, and it's very cheap, but it can't go in all decks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. Um, I'm going to give this two ratings. So... I know, I know. I'm I'm normally the guy that hates going against the the trend, but um, I think in um in a Hobbit deck, this thing gets a one. There's no way, in very 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 limited instances, are you gonna not include a fast hitch in your Hobbit deck. Um, so in a Hobbit deck, this gets a one, but I think outside of a Hobbit deck, this doesn't. You don't run this at all. I mean, even in the, I guess, even in the, um, when we did Sylvans, I guess there would be some, you know, redeeming factor to running some of those, you know, a, a target a Sylvan sort of events. Um, but how many times do you run a Hobbit character in a deck that's not a Hobbit deck? You may run Rosie, but again, Rosie, it, I think Rosie, um, targets another hobbit so you know um, farmer maggot. you could run farmer maggot i call him gandalf light um you know but i don't know i i think that this card outside of a hobbit deck has little to no use so i think that this card gets a 10 outside of a hobbit deck so it's the tale of two cities for me. So it's a it's a one in a Hobbit deck, and it's a 10 outside of a Hobbit deck. So if you want to average that together, that's a 5.5. 5. But it's a, don't do half I don't do half rating, so we'll put it as a 5 if you if if you have to record it the way that that we want to do it. But uh, well, what what number do you want us to put it down as? <laughs> well, or I told you. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a one in a Hobbit deck. <laughs> It's going to be a 10 outside of a Hobbit deck. And if we have to give it a single numbered rating, it has to be, a, it would have to be a five. Right. Because of the fact that. See how, I'm... see what I'm dealing with people. <laughs> see what I'm dealing with. <laughs> see what I'm dealing with. Uh, oh, they know. They, they already know that. <laughs> You're just along for the ride. So, you, you know. So for those people who don't know why, I think 
Grant's getting at, there's a um, we have we keep a spreadsheet of all the cards we rank, and there's no column to have. There's no uh, second column for Dave having two ratings for this one. Sylvan February had its own spreadsheet, so this was. <laughs> Yeah. Grant's like, uh oh, how can I do this? I can't fit this into that. <laughs> well, when we come to do Hobbit um, February or Hobbit whatever you want to do it in, we can then have two ratings for the cards, David. But right now, we only need one. Okay, okay, okay. But I think, I'm, I think I'm right on. I think I'm right on. That's. <laughs> let me just tell you that. So. Okay, everybody, join us next time as we talk about more cards from the game. Have a great day. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, cardtalk2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.